MMA Boxing Talk here. I just wanted to put out a video talking about the fights that took place last night. On December 9th, there was a lot going on. Um, there was a there was so many different cards, you know. There was a boxing card in the UK. There was a boxing card on HBO. There was a boxing card on ESPN. There was a glory kickboxing card. And there was also UFC Fresno. So lots going on last night. Um... Before I get into the Lomachenko Regan Dow uh, recap, quickly want to talk about a huge announcement that became 100% official last night, and that is Stipe Miocic will be defending his title against Francis Ngannou January 20th. It's a very quick turnaround for Ngannou. He just just uh, beat Alistair Overeem last weekend, so I think there's something like about a 45 day turnaround, and he'll be fighting for the the UFC Heavyweight Championship against Stipe Miocic. Um, cannot wait for this fight. It's a fresh fresh matchup. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. You got Ngannou who can put you out with one shot. You got Stipe who's you know well-rounded, great wrestler, has enough power in his hands himself. Both guys uh, are coming off of four first-round stoppages in their last four fights. They you know, haven't seen the second round in a while, both these guys. So it's going to be a great matchup. Cannot wait for this. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Now let's get into Lomachenko Rigandau. Um, I mean, what can you say? Lomachenko makes Guillermo Rigandau quit after the sixth round. Guillermo quit on his stool. Um, I mean, what a masterclass by Lomachenko. What a performance. I mean... It's tough to put into words and describe um, and and talk about Lomachenko because he's he's something we've never seen before. He does things that you know is very um, you know untraditional in boxing. Um, he, he's so high volume but defensively sound and, and and with his footwork and feints and angles and the way he you know. He's right-handed, but he's a southpaw, and all these things. Uh, the, the, this training regimen, the way he trains, um, you know, for reaction time and, and mental strength, and he trains all these things. He doesn't just come home after a long day at the gym and sit on his ass and watch TV. You know, he, he he continues to work his mind after a long day when he's tired and sluggish. He works his mind in reaction and, and all these different things, but. That culminates in a performance like we just saw last night. Um, I mean, he made a two-time Olympic gold medalist quit. You know, that that's there's something to be said about that. Now, um, I know, you know, people don't want to give him the number one pound-for-pound pound spot right away because he only has 11 fights. Um, but at the same time, he's one of the best amateur fighters of all time. He might have the most impressive amateur record ever. It's like 399 and one. Um, he might have a couple more losses than that, but regardless, you know he, he's almost perfect as an amateur. And and having like, you know, over 400 fights, that's insane. You know, that's unheard of. Um, now you know Rigandau, he said that he he broke his hand in the second round, and he was you know that's the reason why he quit. I don't really buy it. For one, you know, Rigandau didn't really throw enough punches to break his hand. Um, and it happens often in boxing where fighters have a broken hand and they fight through it. You know, it's very rare in boxing that a fighter will quit, will throw in the towel because of a hand injury. I mean, we have guys like Manny Pacquiao um, who fought, you know, 12 rounds with a with a torn rota rotator cuff and couldn't even you know have freezing agents that would have been very very painful and he fought through it so for Rigan now to 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 quit from a broken hand supposedly um, I just don't buy it you know especially the the what was happening in there you know Rigan Dow wasn't landing anything he was landing one or two punches per round um, it's frustrating you know Lomachenko is no Moss Chenko, no Moss champion. I mean, what more can you say? This guy, two of his best wins last night against Guillermo Rigandau and against Nicholas Walters, who was supposed to give 
Lomachenko lots of trouble. Same with Rigondeau. Both guys Lomachenko made quit. Um, like I said, no Moschenko. Unbelievable. Great, great performance by um, Vasily Lomachenko. I mean, what a... It's awesome to see him put on a show like that on ESPN. You know, it was even broadcast in Canada, which was awesome, on TSN. Um, and, and the last few ESPN fights, the Pacquiao one, um, the Terrence Crawford fight, they were on ESPN as well, but they weren't aired in Canada. So I was really happy to see Lomachenko Rigandau aired in Canada. I got the whole broadcast instead of trying to find a, a shitty stream. You know, it worked out really well. Um, but yeah, I don't know what's next for Lomachenko. I'd like to see him move up to 135, um, and take on new challengers, maybe, uh, Jorge Linares or Mikey Garcia, but uh, I mean, I see, I see Lomachenko beating those guys as well. Obviously it'd be maybe a little more difficult, uh, because they're a lot bigger than, Lom than Riggin now. Um, but I mean... Yeah, I'm not sure. Or I would like to possibly see Lomachenko, if he doesn't move up, I'd like to see him rematch Orlando Salido. Um, that's Lomachenko's only loss on his record. Um, it was his second pro fight, and he was fighting a guy like Salido right off the bat, which nobody does. Even, you know, people that come from the amateurs later on in their career, you don't take a fight against... Salido in their second pro fight, but Lomachenko did, and it was a close fight. Um, Salido was extremely dirty in that fight, and you know Lomachenko really wasn't ready. Uh, he didn't know how to react to the the dirty tactics, and you could tell he. Since then, the last three years, he's really improved, and he and he. He, I'm sure, would um, dispatch of Salido very, very. Um, very quickly in this fight. I mean, I could see Salido. I don't know if he'd quit, but. Um, I mean, I, I just see that fight going totally Loma's way, and I see it being a tough fight for Salido now in, you know, 2018, let's say. But uh, great, great performance by Lomachenko. Really happy to see him get that big win. Um, he definitely exceeded expectations. This was supposed to be a close fight, and he outclassed Rigandau and made him quit. So amazing. Enough about that, though. Uh, I also want to talk about the, the main event uh, at UFC Fresno was Cub Swanson versus Brian Ortega. This was a pretty, um, this was a solid featherweight matchup. You know, you had Cub Swanson, who was ranked number four going into this fight. Brian Ortega was ranked number six going into this fight. Um, you know, I really wasn't sure. I didn't really make a prediction for this. I was favoring Cub Swanson, but I knew Ortega with his... Jiu-Jitsu, you know, always is dangerous. Um, but hats off to Brian Ortega. He earned, um, I believe it was a second round submission. Don't quote me on that. I, I think it was a second round submission. But anyway, um, you know, Ortega, he, he seems to have a good chin. He takes damage well enough. I mean, Cub was landing some nice body shots. And, you, you know, landing with power. Um, I mean... I don't know if Ortega would have been able to to continue taking that type of damage throughout the five rounds and continue on, but um, he's definitely a durable enough guy. He's a good size featherweight. Um, you know, his striking is definitely not on the level of Cub Swanson, we saw, but um, he was definitely landing some, some shots here and there. Um, but his jiu-jitsu, it's such a... It's such a um, an unpredictable thing. I mean, the way he submitted Cub, I mean, it was phenomenal. It really was. Um, so hats off to him. I mean, he's a young guy. He's only 26 years old. He's undefeated, 13-0. and um, He's won five in a row in the UFC. So, I mean, he's his next fight, there's a few options, but personally, um, I mean, I don't see the UFC giving him a title shot after Frankie and just making Ortega wait like eight or ten months. You know what I mean? Because if he's going to wait for Frankie, Frankie's going to probably fight Aldo, or sorry, Frankie will fight Max Holloway probably in March or April. Um, and then Holloway will probably fight again at the end of the year. So 
does Ortega really want to wait almost a full year to get that title shot? I mean, he might be up for it, but I, I think the UFC will book him in another fight before that. Um, and if they do, here's the three guys I'd like to see um, Brian Ortega fight next. I would, I would like to see him fight Yair Rodriguez. I think that would be a great matchup. Rodriguez is ranked number seven. Um, also wouldn't mind Brian Ortega seeing him fight um, Chan Sung Jung, the Korean, um, Korean zombie. Or if Ricardo Lamas wins this coming Saturday, have him fight Ricardo Lamas. So I think either... Korean zombie, Ricardo Lamas, or Yair Rodriguez, someone, you know, that's an established fighter, and a win, you know, if he could get past another guy like a Rodriguez, Lamas, or Korean Superboy, or Korean zombie, I should say, then Ortega's definitely ready for that title shot. Um, you got to stay sharp, you know, you don't want to wait, you know, a year just sitting out for a title shot, it's just not the right thing to do. Um... You want to continue, you want to stay active, work on your craft, um, get more experience and all that stuff. So hats off to Brian Ortega, phenomenal submission. Um, he's definitely a player in the featherweight division. Can't wait to see who they book him with next. Um, and for Cub Swanson, you know, I mean, it's tough to see that happen. He was, you know, he almost got a title shot against Holloway. Um, he was in the sweepstakes. Aldo, of course, ended up getting it. Um... And now, you know, he, he's got to build himself back up again. Uh, I don't know who he's going to fight next. He's probably going to take some time off. Um, but yeah, it's really it's really too bad for, for Cub Swanson. But it is what it is. It's a harsh game. But anyway, that's it for this one. If you liked the video, definitely subscribe. Check me out on Twitter at MMABoxingTalk1. That's it for this one. Peace.